not gonna lie, I am invisible. Like, I don't understand. Hold on, is there a vanish or something? No. I d I'm invisible. Why is this happening? I want to do my intro. Hello, my name is Green, and today I'm going to be covering the very basics of the plugin Voxel Sniper. If you've never used this plugin before, this is the tutorial for you. First, let me explain a little bit about Voxel. It's a plugin that you can put on your server that allows you to edit terrain in a very paintbrush-like manner using a variety of commands. As such, it's the essential tool needed for making landscapes, mountains, anything to do with terrain, you need Voxel Sniper. Okay, so let's get started. There are two main items that you need for Voxel Sniper, the arrow and the gunpowder. These are opposites of each other, so every command that we use is going to set the arrow to do something. For example, if we set it to fill, the gunpowder will do the opposite, it will melt. So that saves you switching between commands over and over again. By default, the arrow is set to remove a single block. You can check this just by right clicking, which is how you use the arrow. There are a huge amount of commands in Voxel Sniper, so I'm going to be taking it really slowly. First of all, I'm going to teach you just how to make a sphere. Using the command forward slash b, b, so that stands for forward slash brush ball, it brings up the ball command and it links it to your arrow. If I right click by default, it is set to air, so it's going to make a sphere of air. To change the size of this sphere, and indeed any other brush that we'll be using, the command is forward slash b followed by a number and the number represents the radius of the sphere. Before we continue, I just want to point out that everyone, and I mean everyone, will make a mistake at some point. To undo your previous action, simply type forward slash u followed by a number, and the number represents how many actions you want to undo. Now, if I wanted to change the block that I'm using, I would use forward slash v and then whatever block I wanted. So for example, I would do forward slash V stone, which stands for voxel, forward slash voxel stone. Just to demonstrate, I'm now going to change my voxel into ice and right click to make a sphere of ice of the same size. I then go on to type forward slash U3 to undo what I've done and we're back to where we started. You now know how to make spheres using voxel sniper. We're now gonna move on to a couple more core commands of the plugin. The first being forward slash B E fill. And this does what it says on the tin, it fills in holes. And as I mentioned before, the gunpowder is automatically set to B E melt, which does the opposite and erodes away and makes holes bigger. Between using the gunpowder and the arrow, you can shape and reshape anything that you're working on at the time, as I'm demonstrating by making this hole bigger and smaller. The final command that I want to teach you before we move on to making mountains is the overlay command, which is forward slash b over. Now my brush is set to overlay. When I right click with my arrow, it's going to change the blocks into whatever my voxel is set at, which at the moment is ice. So if I right click with my arrow, it's going to change all this grass into ice. But remember, you can change the size and the voxel by using forward slash b and forward slash v. For example, if I change it to forward slash v stone, the overlay is now going to become stone. Okay, so those are the basic commands that you're going to need for Voxel Sniper. Now I'm going to show you how you can use those commands to create mountains. I'm going to show you two different methods to make mountains. The first is a very simple and effective way of making a mountain, but you're always going to get the same results. There's not a lot of room for creativity. The second is a bit more freestyle and you're able to make a much more shaped mountain that has a lot more room for creativity. Okay, so let's jump into the first method of making a mountain. We actually use the command I just taught you, forward slash b over. But instead of using the arrow, we're going to be using the gunpowder, which interestingly enough, when you right click, actually raises it up by the set depth, which in this case is three. I can edit the depth by going back to forward slash b over, but instead of pressing enter, I add d1, which is depth one. 
So after changing my depth to 1, I then continue to right click with the gunpowder, raising up the mountain to the height that I want. It's going to take a little while using this method to raise it up as far as you want, but you'll get there eventually. I'm now going to speed up the rising of this mountain, focusing in particular on where you want the peaks of your mountain to be. You don't want the whole mountain to be the same level, you want it to gradually get taller. So you want to focus on key parts, just a few circles along your ridge and they will form the peaks. The key to this technique is as you focus on one particular area making it taller than the rest, you need to lower the brush size that you're using so that the mountain gets smaller as it gets taller. You do this as you know by using forward slash B number. So I gradually work my way from B6 all the way to B1. Okay so there we have the first technique. I'm going to leave it as stone for the moment and we will decorate the mountains after both techniques are shown. So that was forward slash B over. We're now going to move on to the second method which is a bit more freestyle and a little bit more technical. We start by going back to the first command that I taught you, which is forward slash B, B, the ball command. We're then going to make the frame of our mountain, so to speak. So I start by layering down some of the balls in just an arch shape to try and get a general idea of where my mountain is going to be. I then develop it by making contour lines of the general shape. So I'm marking out the actual curvature of the mountain by using these balls. I then go on to extend all of those from each point that I do to the peak where the top of the mountain is going to be. Remember not to make your mountain too stubby and remember to drag the contours really far out to the bottom. You want it to be steep at the top and not so much at the bottom. If your starting contour lines wasn't exactly what you wanted, feel free to just do another one over the top. Once you've done that, then start to fill in some gaps with the balls. Now try not to go outside of your contours, try and fill in only the middle, just so that it's not completely hollow. We then move on to the second command I taught you, B, E, fill. We then start right clicking all along the contour lines, filling in all the gaps between the balls in order to create a perfect mountain. This will take some time, and it's a little bit fiddly, you might want to go around changing your brush size. A large brush size will cover a lot of the mountain, but it will look quite bad because it's not as detailed. A smaller brush, although it takes longer, will give you a more refined look. By changing between the two, hopefully you can get the look you're going for. I actually used a command that I didn't teach you at the start of the video. During the creation of this method, I use a command forward slash be smooth. It's a very useful command because all it does is tidy up all the little loose bits of block that are everywhere. But careful, overuse will make it look very stringently neat and very unnatural. By using a mixture of BE Fill, BE Smooth and BE Melt, you can fiddle your way up to getting a really good looking mountain. Okay, so that's it. Both methods have produced a mountain. As I said earlier, the first method is always going to produce nicer results than the second if you are new to the plugin. And also the second method has a lot more room for freedom. I just did a very simple shape to show how it's done and I didn't do a particularly good job of it anyway, I was just trying to show it quickly. You could do any shape you can think of using that technique. The first method is very limited to that very high ending shape of a mountain. It can't really do much else. The mountains are a little boring because they're completely stone. We're now going to overlay them using the command that I taught you earlier, forward slash B over. We're going to set the voxel to grass, forward slash V grass, and then right click to your heart's content all over the mountain. That's going to add grass everywhere, and I continue to do this for both mountains. But they still look a little bland. You can make any mountain look much nicer just by simply adding vanilla Minecraft trees. But instead of just putting saplings down as one normally would, we're going to use Voxel Sniper, which has a much quicker method. You use the command forward slash B tree. It will automatically set you to a normal vanilla Minecraft tree, 
and right click to your heart's content again, placing trees wherever you want. If you want to take it a step further, you can add waterfalls all over your mountains as well, but that wouldn't be using voxel, you would do that by hand. And that's it, we've created two mountains using two different techniques. I tried to design this video to teach you the basics, and then incorporate it into something you're probably going to want to use voxels for, which is mountains. It wasn't easy and it took 10 minutes, but hopefully you can take something home from this tutorial and learn a little about Voxel Sniper. It is very difficult to learn Voxel Sniper and you won't get it right first time. It has a very steep learning curve, but once you've got the hang of it, the results can be spectacular. Thank you very much for watching, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial, and if you have any ideas for a future video, let me know in the comments section below.